Good morning guys, good morning internet, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am here again with another narrated art time lapse videos for us to watch um, and of course learn a thing or two from. Um, so today we are taking a look at the sculptor. Um, I have named this file like many different file names and so uh, in my confusion as to what the actual name of this is I decided that I'm just going to call it the sculptor because obviously there's a sculpture that is being made in the illustration so yeah I really love this illustration this is an awesome illustration um, but um, I guess to talk real quick about what's going on in Creta and whatnot um, I am doing quick sketches for this particular illustration. This illustration of course started out as a prompt from Daily Spit Paint. Um, and the prompt for that day was painted sculpture. Uh, we were supposed to illustrate painted sculpture. And for my particular illustration I decided to go um, with a guy who's painting a sculpture clearly he has uh, a palette in his hands and a brush and it looks like he's you know paint brushing the sculpture obviously um, so yeah this is basically my 30 minute version of the illustration um, so again to paraphrase or to talk about um, daily spit paint uh, for the ones who's not familiar with it, it's a group in Facebook and the whole goal of the daily spit paint group is to create 30 minute speed paints. I mean, that's it. That's all the time you get to finish an illustration is 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, I have to do this fast. I have to do this quick. Uh, as you can tell, I'm trying to create a scene around my initial sketch. My initial sketch obviously was the sculpture and the guy, the sculptor, uh, the lead subject of the illustration. And of course, I'm trying to draw an environment to place them in just to make the painting a little bit more complete and, you know, make it look like they're in something. So, um, what I like best about this 30 minute illustration is the lighting method that I use. The lighting method that I use is just a singular light. It looks like it's coming from one window. And so you get this really deep shadows and you know really bright light. It looks like a sunlight basically. Um, so when I made this painting, when I you know, when I looked at the end result, the end result I wasn't really too happy about. It's not obviously one of my favorite 30 minute speed paints. Um, but I just absolutely loved the lighting. I thought the lighting was gorgeous. Um, it's not really functional in real life. If you have one simple window or one simple light source in your studio, <laughs> that would make your studio way too dark. Um, and it would be just hard to work on any kind of artwork when the lighting conditions is just too dark, uh, which is the case in this particular um, painting. The lighting conditions is kind of semi-dark with like one strong light source. But the thing with the painting and the thing with the illustration though is that it has a mood attached to it. It's very romantic. It's very chiaroscuro. Man, I could never pronounce that word. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> chiaroscuro. Kiaroscuro, Kiaroscuro. Um, it's an art term for this uh, painting method or painting style where basically um, the focal subject is the like how basically Kiaroscuro and like the way you paint Kiaroscuro is that in order to uh, draw the viewer's attention to the subject matter. Typically what you do in a, in a chiaroscuro painting is make everything dark and then just have like a ray of light on your subject matter. Um, so basically you have all these objects that are kind of you know dark or like an environment is kind of semi-dark. Maybe it's night or something. And then you have your subject. Um, which is lit by like a light source, maybe a lamppost or something, or maybe 
Um, maybe it's a cloudy day and everything's kind of dark, but then you have this break in the clouds where this sun ray is showing in a figure. So basically, that's what Kara Screw is. And that's what that illustration was. You know, you have this one light source, probably a small window or a window. And I really love that lighting. I really love that look. And so when I finished the 30 minute speed paint, which I just did, <laughs> I just finished the 30 minute speed paint. I was like, let me try and recreate it in a much longer speed paint format, uh, which is what I did. <laughs> um, so basically we are in Blender now because I thought, you know, uh, I, I didn't really need to go full out details because um, I like for this particular illustration, I decided to just use uh, Manuel Bastagnoni's lab or MB lab now because it this software morphed into a totally different software now. Um, but MB lab is the software that you use to create the humanoid characters. And when I said earlier that I didn't really have to go super detailed with the characters, or I didn't have to go super detailed, that's what I meant <laughs> is, is the characters. I didn't have to bring MB lab. Um, to create the characters, but I just went ahead and did just because MB Lab has um, posts, pre made poses, which is what you see me doing right now. I'm like looking through all the posts, listing that they have, and see if there's a post that I can use for a pre made illustrate or for my. Lighting from <laughs> my hang on, let me try to collect my thoughts. I was looking through the poses so I can have um, a pose to use for my character slash sculpture, which you saw what I did with the sculpture right there. I, I found a pose of like this lady who's like who it looks like she's doing witchcraft or whatnot, and I was like, well, that post looks like it would be a very interesting post to use for the sculpture and so I went ahead and use it obviously and so that was the reason why I use MB Lab because I know they have like preset um, poses on there and I didn't want to have to take a whole lot of time experimenting with poses and what the sculpture would be like I was just kind of hoping I'd find inspiration from MB Lab which is what basically ended up happening I just ended up taking this um, Pose from MB Lab and using it as my uh, sculpture. So um, you can see right now there's pretty much the scene set up right here. You know, I mean, this is pretty much the final illustration right there. The sculptor off, the sculptor off to the left, the sculptor to the right. It's bigger than the sculptor, obviously. And so yeah, um, everything else was like quick modeling uh of boxes and whatnot to like place uh to place the characters in the sculpture in an environment so you see me doing all this quick modeling um quick or uh, i'm quickly modeling objects so you know to place uh around the characters just so that they could be in an environment and so yeah, I did this real fast, real quick. Um, I typically don't spend a whole lot of time in Blender. I typically spend just an hour in Blender. Um, and the reason why I do 3D is, you know, just so that I could get the lighting and the perspective issues all ready and corrected from the set, from the get go. Um, and then all I really have to do is just pretty much just paint and create a in my 2d application so uh so yeah this that's the reason why i use blender a 3d tool just to get me a good you know base render or render that i could use for my illustration so yeah and as you can see eh, i was trying to recreate the lighting conditions from that 30 minutes speed, speed paint spit paint <laughs> um you can see that the character is now in a room and I cut off this one little tiny corner. I open it up so that the sunlight can 
go through and you can see that that's what is shining through the window so yeah um and obviously i'm doing all this extra stuff in in the back just so that i could have more stuff to add or just just so that it's not so boring and then i totally forgot that those extra characters were supposed to be half made uh sculptures but yeah i didn't end up i obviously didn't end up using those uh, and I ended up using something else. But yeah, this part in Blender is almost done. Uh, after this part, I'm going to bring this illustration or the render onto Krita and then obviously trace over it. So yeah, um, I guess I could take the time now to talk about some of the issues that I faced. Uh, one of the bigger issues that I faced in the rendering is that I should have opened up uh, the angle or not so much as the angle, but the, uh, man, I keep forgetting what the term is. Uh, let me look, let me fire Blender up so I can look up what the term is. But it's the, it has something to do with the camera. Um, it's a setting in a camera that I keep forgetting to change, that I really need to change simply because the focal length. Um, sometimes the focal length makes everything kind of look, it doesn't give too much depth. In the case of the render that I made out of, uh, Blender, I didn't change the focal length of the camera to a point where like it shows more that the, the sculptor is obviously slightly behind the sculpture and so that's the reason why in the render the sculptor is lit because she's slightly behind but in the render that's not very clear because the focal length of the camera kind of just smushes everything and it kind of gives this whole very tight feeling to the render and I should have paid attention to that because I really like wide format or like really like a low focal length is what I typically like in some of my illustrations just because it's wider it feels like there's more space uh, it feels like um, the illustrations are more interesting um, and that some of my perspectives are not so linear and so straight it's, you know they're just it just gives more feeling of that basically unlike this particular illustration where there wasn't that much that because it just looks like the sculptor and the sculpture is like in the same plane and that and that became problematic for me because you know it feels like if they were in the same plane the sculptor shouldn't be lit it should be she should be dark you know she should be in the uh in the cast shadow of the sculpture we're clearly in the render it wasn't like that so in the end at the, at the very end of the painting i had to kind of do like little trickery in the cast shadows just so that it it could look like you know that the character is realistically lit because that was like one of my biggest biggest problems um before i fixed the illustration you know, when, when I was taking a look at it and when I was debating whether I should make a video out of this, one of the things that kind of made, that did not make sense was obviously the lighting. It felt like the sculpture should be in shadow and it obviously wasn't. So I had to like fiddle some things around. It didn't get recorded. It's not part of the recording process. I wish I could show it to you. But clearly in the illustration, there's, um, it definitely shows. In the final illustration, the sculptor has her own cast shadow separate from the cast shadow of the sculpture. And there's this shaft of light that kind of just separates those two cast shadows. And so really, that's practically the only indication that the viewer will have to kind of realize that the sculptor is farther behind than the sculpture. And that's the reason why she's lit. Um, 
obviously I needed for her to be lit because she's obviously the central figure of the illustration so so yeah that was one of the things that you know I should have paid attention to in Blender to get me a better perspective on things uh, but obviously uh, I wasn't thinking <laughs> very well I was going in automatic so yeah but still in the end though like the the end result still came out great and which is part of the reason why i'm putting this in my portfolio so anyways um <laughs> enough about that critique right now um let's talk about what the process is right now i'm doing a quick coloring uh of the scene and basically the way i color is i use uh david voice brush um uh, random mech brush I, I always use a random mech brush to start things out and I set a hue variation on it and just kind of splatter some color everywhere on the illustration and then as soon as I splatter some form of colors what I end up doing is that I merge the outline sketch which you see me do the outline sketch I just did the outline sketch and then I merge it with the random colors that I got from um, the random mech brush and then the base paint the base paint was just like two-tone color it was just like that dark blue so I merged them all in one layer and then as soon as I merge everything in one layer I kind of smudge things around just so that I could get this base painting to do my final detailing in so right now I'm just doing my smudging my blending and then after that you'll start seeing me do the detailing process
Okay, so I am pretty much finished with detailing the background and I'm about to start working on the foreground. So, um, I guess real quick, uh, I could talk real, um, I could talk about my detailing process and really my detailing process is pretty much rinse and repeat all throughout the areas of the painting, which is it's a three-step process. I mentioned this before. What I typically do is delineate my edges or make my edges sharper, make it look cleaner, um, make the shape readable. Um, and then after that, I accentuate the shadows. If the shadows need a little darkening, I darken it some more. And then after that, I add highlights if highlights are needed adding. And so I just repeat this three-step process all the way throughout the painting. I obviously started out in the background in this particular painting. I, I was doing the wall. And then after I finished the wall, I moved on to the ceiling. Um, and then after that, I did the shelves, which I'm still actually constantly working on the shelves, as you can see. Um, so the shelves was interesting. Um, the shelves was initially supposed to hold half-made sculptures, right? And that's the reason why I have all those extra characters from MB Lab that I made initially. Because I was planning for them to be like half-made sculptures. And I was going to put them in shelves. <laughs> so... Um, clearly that did not happen um, in the end I decided that you know in the studio it's gonna be you know a bunch of different stuff <laughs> instead of just a sculpture studio it's also a painting studio and so that's what I decided to put on the shelves I put a bunch of canvases um, and a bunch of paint cans and a bunch of other stuff that you would find in a typical artist studio. So this particular sculptor is not only a sculptor, but now she's an artist. Yay! Wow, she's so multi-talented. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I thought that would have made a little bit more interesting illustration, throwing in all this other extra stuff around. Um, so yeah, and now that I've pretty much finished with the background, I am slowly working on the foreground. I'm slowly working on the sculpture. Um, it is immensely difficult to make this look like <laughs> it's a sculpture, simply because it kind of looks like a character. So um, just about the only thing that kind of makes this look like a sculpture is just the fact that she has blue skin and obviously the sculptor herself has brown skin. So. Yeah, that's pretty much the only indication that is a sculpture. So, and I didn't give her irises. I don't think I give her an iris. I kind of just gave her a black eye. So yeah, that's another indication that it's a sculpture. And so as you can see, when I detailed this thing, you know, I kind of just slowly uh, chisel away um, on the base paint. Yeah, basically kind of sharpen my edges just so that everything looks cleaner uh, in the case of her outfit you just saw me work in the outfit real quick uh, i needed to find her uh, chest area some more so i added some more shadows which is what i was doing and kind of slightly doing and then obviously i added highlights the hand pose is very very interesting man i love that hand pose because i thought that was really cool to draw so clearly i'm trying to make uh, the hand fingers readable and so that's what I just did just now I just made it a little bit more readable before you couldn't tell that there were four fingers now you can and then obviously I'm gonna switch back over to the other side do the same thing and in, in case you couldn't tell there's this extra layer of blur glow that I added on there just to kind of pop things out um, I turn it on and off just to see what the final effect is because I wanted to um I, I'm a color picker <laughs> I love color picking um and so I, I didn't want the blur glow to be active while I'm color picking from my canvas itself because then it would just mess up my colors so um that's why I turned it on and off um but obviously I turn it back on just to check the final end result and what it would look like and yet it not all that stuff so that's why you see me turn it on every now and then but yeah I'm just slowly working on this character and or not this character but the sculpture and then obviously after doing the sculpture I will work on artists herself which um, 
which hasn't really been touched upon a whole lot. Um, as you can see right now in the illustration, both the girl and um, the sculpture is sharing like one cast shadow. Um, in the final illustration, I separated this one cast shadow just so that it looks like the girl is in a different plane than the sculpture. So again, like I said, it wouldn't be just that one big blue shadow. It's like two big, well, one small blue shadow and then another big blue shadow. So, and then it's separated by the shaft of light, obviously, or a cast light, uh, not a shaft of light, but a cast light. Uh -huh. So yeah. But yeah, I already went through some of my critiques about this piece, uh, namely the focal length of the illustration. I didn't really like it, but um, but in the end, I mean, I kind of fi found fixes for it, obviously. Um, the other thing that I wanted to make note of that I absolutely love is the complementary color scheme. Um, er, the original 30 minute speed paint was analogous and I love analog that that color scheme or that very 30 minutes pit paint the green analogous color scheme that I use in that one I absolutely love it simply because I don't use analogous color schemes a whole lot I'm always using split complementary that's my favorite color scheme or uh, triadic my second favorite color scheme I never ever do analogous which maybe I should start doing analogous color schemes more and then obviously we have um, this one, wow, a <laughs> critic crash. I don't know what that was all about. But we also have this color scheme, which is complementary, which I don't use often enough. And blues and oranges are such a great color scheme. Everyone uses it. It's used predominantly in films. You'll see a lot of blue and orange lighting conditions in a lot of movies. If you watch John Wick, I'm sure you'll see blues and oranges in a lot of the scenes. It's just one of those color schemes that is used a lot and so I was really in love with the fact that I went with that color scheme for this illustration because I was like oh it looks like you know an afternoon dusk kind of setting kind of looks really really cool you know of course it kind of goes with that chiaroscuro chiaroscuro romantic vibe that I was initially going for so yeah so yeah, absolutely love the orange and blue scheme. I love that I didn't introduce any other colors. Um, I didn't really know what my train of thought was if I was planning on adding any other colors. I think it just kind of just ended up being complementary in nature. So. so yeah, I thought that's one of the strengths of this particular illustration. I just thought that it was just very, very cool color scheme, very cool lighting conditions and whatnot. Yeah, so yeah. But yeah, so that's it for this illustration, for this speed paint, for this painting, for this digital painting. Um, I'm almost done with it. I'm just doing a few minor edits and finishing up my detailing of the character, obviously. Uh, changing her face around. Uh, and obviously I took out the glasses. She was wearing glasses at first and I was like, well, the glasses kind of look weird, so let's just make her uh, no glasses girl, regular looking girl. And then yeah, and then I'm really curious whether or not I did record the last edits that I did, the one concerning the plane and my fixes for the focal length, but it doesn't look like I recorded it because the video is almost done and then yeah, I haven't done any of those edits yet, so yeah. But yep, fun times drawing with me and my speed paints that I love to do to break up my my grinds, my long, long grinds, my long, long illustrations that I work on. So yeah, man, that blur glow looks really good. Look at it. And I totally forgot that I doubled it up. I think I, I did, yeah. And that's it. That's the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.